What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about strength gains and training close to failure or not. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. This week we're discussing a new study out of Florida Atlantic University from my coach, Zach Robinson. So Zach has been coaching me in powerlifting for the last three years. He works in Dr. Mike Zordos' lab where he's doing his PhD. And Mike Zordos is, I think it's fair to say, a legend in kind of strength training research at a pretty young age, to be quite honest. He coached me personally for a while and then one of his protégés, Ben Escrow, also coached me for a very long time. Ben still handles me at powerlifting meets. And Zach has been doing my programming for sorry, the last two years, not the last three years, and coached me to two national titles and a world title. I first found out about Zach and his company, Data Driven Strength, when I was listening to him on a podcast with King of the Lifts. They were having, they were having a very interesting discussion about how to program for powerlifting. And the way they program for powerlifting is essentially they'll have people come in, and this is not exactly how they do it, and they'll have them do some sort of heavy set, like a heavy single, heavy double, heavy triple, but then they'll have them do their volume work with relatively light loads pretty far away from failure, like under a six or seven RPE, at least three or four reps away from failure. They did a study actually looking at proximity to failure and gains in strength. And it actually appears that training close to failure inhibited strength gains compared to people who didn't train super close to failure. Now that probably seems very counterintuitive. What are you talking about? This is BS. If you want to grow muscle, you got to train close to failure. Yes, that's true. It's also true that you have to lift heavy if you want to maximize strength expression. And what I mean by that is a one rep max, which is the purest expression of strength, is a very specific skill. If you do not train with heavy loads, like above 85, 90%, then you're not going to be good at expressing that skill. But if we look at expression of strength, and we look at what strength is in its purest form, it's the ability to produce force. And force is mass times acceleration. So if there is a mass component, and there's an acceleration component, both of those matter for the expression of force. Obviously, again, you have to take a heavy lift pretty regularly if you wanna get good at expressing the skill of a one rep max. But we also know that volume is important for strength, not just hypertrophy, it's also important for strength. But when a lot of lifters do their volume work, they're getting pretty close to failure on their volume work. The reason that they think that training very close to failure may impede strength gains is one, it's very fatiguing. So it limits the overall amount of work you can do based on fatigue. But also, if we remember that force is the truest expression of strength, let's take me for an example. Right now, I could probably squat on a really good day, 500 pounds for 10 reps. My first few reps of 500 pounds would be really quick. But once I get to reps like six, seven, eight, and certainly the last two reps, it is going to drastically slow down. And that last rep or two, they're going to be real grinders. They're not going to be very fast. Well, my force production, even though the load is pretty high, my force production on those last few reps really goes down. So the way they program is instead of doing, hey, like let's do one set of 10 or let's do two sets of eight, Instead, the way Zach programs is, hey, we're gonna do multiple sets of that weight, but pretty far away from failure. So for example, instead of doing that, I might do multiple sets of four reps with 500 pounds, or more, multiple sets of five reps with 500 pounds. Because at that given load, those first few reps, because the intraset fatigue is low, are still going to be fast. And so if I have to do, let's say 16 total reps with 500 pounds, am I better off for strength doing two sets of eight where the last couple of reps are gonna be really slow, my force production goes down, or am I better off doing four sets of four where each rep is pretty snappy and I'm maximizing that force production? Well, their most recent research would say you're better off doing the four sets of four. What their research really says, in my opinion, and I've talked to Zach about this and he agrees, is that in powerlifting and for maximal strength development, the most important thing is to move a given load as quickly as you can. If we're talking about a absolute one rep max, it's going to move pretty slow for most people because it's a one rep max. But if you're doing, let's say 90% of your one rep max, which right now, 
90% of my 1RM is probably about 560 pounds. So if I'm doing 90%, I can only do a couple reps before my rep speed really starts to slow down because I can probably only get five reps with 560, something like that, going absolute all out, maybe, maybe, a, maybe six, maybe. But so I would better, if I wanted to select that load to use, I would probably be better off doing multiple sets of like one or two or at maximum three reps as opposed to doing multiple sets of four or five or six reps where those last few reps are gonna be really, really slow. If I'm doing 80% of a one rep max, which for me, again, is probably gonna be around like 490, 500 pounds, am I better off doing a set of 10 or am I better off doing multiple sets of three to four or five reps where I can keep those reps snappy? Their research suggests you're better off taking that given load, doing a greater number of sets with less reps, staying further away from failure, probably around at least four reps away from failure and making that weight move quickly. That being said, that is different than the literature on hypertrophy, which the literature on hypertrophy says you wanna train pretty close to failure. Now here's where people get this confused. They'll say, well, look at this lifter who trains really close to failure on all his sets and got really, really strong. Yeah, you could still get really strong training that way, but they probably would have gotten stronger training a different way to maximize force production. By the same token, you can build muscle not training to failure. Absolutely. You can grow muscle not getting super close to failure. And we can go back and look at people who train this way, who grow a lot of muscle. But the point is they probably didn't grow as much muscle as they could have if they took it close to failure. Make sure to understand those points of distinction. So my take home is if strength is the goal, maximize force production. Don't do a lot of really grindy reps in the gym. It's probably more of a negative than it is a positive and focus on moving a given load as quickly as you can. All right guys, if you want some help taking the guesswork out of programming, make sure you check out the BioLane Workout Builder. For just $12.99 a month, you get access to all of our evidence-based programming. We take all the guesswork out of the reps, the sets, the intensity, but we give you the flexibility to choose exercises that you prefer and have access to at your gym, and we also have home-based programs as well. So make sure you click the link in the description, check that out, and I'll catch you next week.